Hi, Shay Given here. You're watching Irish Football Fan TV. Hello and welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. This is the final word from Wales for Ireland 1 from the, the Cardiff City Stadium. Uh, I suppose it's obviously not a very good result. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of rage and you know backlash from the game. Uh, everyone online is calling for Martin O'Neill's head. We're going to get to that later on. Um, just in terms of the lineup, what were your thoughts on the lineup? Confused the absolute hell out of me. Um, Martin O'Neill's teams have been a bit crazy. There's always been a bit of one obscure change, but this one really, really, even by Martin O'Neill's standards, this one really, really puzzled me. Trying to work out, is he gone three at the back? Is he? What's, who's, is it going to be Coleman and Christie in midfield? Um, it just felt like it it just summed up everything that's been wrong at the moment and that huge vibe of negativity and yeah no it it it, it was it was very very confusing yeah well we might as well go in, kind of into the lineup i mean you got the back four uh back five i suppose if you include randolph and that that was pretty much what was expected uh you know wards duffy clark uh coleman and randolph yeah like wouldn't have any issue with that four like that as you said that four probably picks itself yeah. If, you, if you are going with a four, that, that picks itself. And then you go into kind of midfield and you've got Hendrick, um, you've got Hooran, and then who was the, the other midfielder? You had kind of Robinson off Walters, and then you had uh, O'Dowda and uh, Christie on the right, which I thought was a bit weird having uh, Silas Christie on the right. Like he's already gone forward and everything like that, but I just thought it was a bizarre one for this game. Yeah, it didn't work. It, it was a strange, strange. One of, as I said, very very confusing yeah but just kind of obviously I think what set the tone was as soon as uh, the tip off was uh, the, as soon as it was kicked off uh, Gareth Bale straight away closes down I think it was Seamus Coleman and it just kind of made this like we are coming for you basically yeah, and put us on the back foot straight from the because go because we'd spoke on the on the previous show that you know <coughs> we, we feared that the worst really um, both in terms of our own performance, our lack of performance, and then uh, in terms of a bit of a back backlash from from the Welsh uh, after the, the last qualifier, and you know, as you said, right from the off, I remember just going to myself and I was, oh God, this is exactly as I feared. Um, this is ex it. It was just like you someone press play in a movie, and you, you knew the story was going to happen straight away. It was just a horrible start, and we never recovered after that. Yeah, what were your thoughts anyway? Uh, we we. You know, positive about the lineup. What 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 way were you looking at? Did you think as soon as you know? I um I I kind of worried uh about the lineup at the start because when I saw that it was kind of almost like five at the back with the with the two wing backs almost. It was very like the way that we played against uh, USA, and when we played against USA, um I remember this actually we were at the game. I remember the first half. It was almost as if we were trying to play out from the back. But we weren't very good at it, and we kept giving away the ball. And then, um, obviously, USA had a lot of the ball in the first half, and we went one 0 down. And usually, if we're playing something like five at the back, usually if it was like a World Cup qualifier or something like that, we would be the team that would be the inferior team that would be defending and sitting with five. But I thought when he's playing five, he must be trying to actually play out against them. Do you know what I mean? Which kind of worried me because I just thought we were just going to be cut open then as soon as we played. I was like, five at the back, he's obviously not trying to sit here. He's actually trying to actually um, make the pitch as wide as he possibly can and that's going to leave massive gaps between us. Like That was my initial That, that was effectively what happened then because you're looking at the, yeah. the, the early goal that they got. Uh, cut through pass and bam, he took just a first boom, time. Boom, boom, and there's just no one, there's gaps. Every, as you said, there's, there's gaps everywhere on the mm. pitch and we just look like we're just scrambling the whole time and you know, first goal summed up summed up everything. Like we didn't get a challenge in, they absolutely cut us apart, and it's it's just an awful. awful uh, Randolph goal. maybe could have done better from where I, from where I was sitting. I was at the game obviously, but mm. I I haven't had a chance to, perhaps, to actually see the goal back. Perhaps, but one. you know, it doesn't excuse the the the, the lack. I suppose what I say the play, but the lack of play in front of it. The way we were just cut open so easily. Um, it wasn't if they had to do anything special or spectacular. It was just boom, 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 and they threw in goal, and you're like, it's going to be a long night. Yeah, and then not long uh, after then, uh, Hendrick loses the ball, and it's a long diagonal ball over to Gareth Bale, and uh, yeah, defence just left put in his left foot. This one, like, like obviously, look, Bale's a, one of the best players in the world. He, he's up there in that elite level. Um, so you do uh, sometimes have to realise... 
look, we're not blessed with the best players, and he is that a level above, and he's always going to stand out in a game like this. But this, for this, his his goal frustrated the hell out of me because, you know, it's 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 you know what you're getting with Bale, and like he had so much room down that left channel. He, and like we just showed him inside didn't even like you knew everybody knows when Bale gets the ball in that position he's going to cut inside and he's going to bash top in the far side it's you know what's going to happen like surely you just have to stand him up and try and get him down the right channel and it was just so easy and I, yeah like whatever about you know as I said at the start whatever about him you know doing a piece of magic it was a good finish but we made it so so easy for him and it was just so frustrating and that for me kind of Summed up the way the game, the, how far off we were, in all levels of the game, in, te- in you know, in in terms of our mentality, in terms of you know, spurs, and just in terms of just being completely off the races. Yeah, what were you thinking when the second goal went in? Because obviously, well, we don't score a lot of goals anyway. What were your thoughts? Do you think we could have got back into it at this at that present time? No, I thought um, I thought we were probably just going to keep conceding because um, our strongest point with the players that we have is uh, pretty much defending for our big, lives big and, then ho- and ho- hopefully if from set pieces and things like that it's going the players that we have aren't good enough to have this whole thing of getting so high and wide and what happens is then when we lose the ball we get caught in transition in that small amount of time that when we're wide trying to get compact we get caught open in that because the players aren't good enough they're not quick enough and not as organised to get into that so Martin O'Neill when he was successful was we were always compact, but when we had the ball, the width was almost non-existent. We we wouldn't open up too many gaps no. either. Yeah, we would stay kind of stay now because we knew if we lost the ball, we wouldn't have enough time or we wouldn't be good enough to to prevent those gaps from happening. You know. Yeah. So I just thought it was going to keep going the way that it was going. Do you know what I mean? Um, which is quite um upsetting. Do you know what I mean? Because you just knew it was going to keep going like that. You know what I mean? Like, I know sometimes when we had the ball, like we had a few chances and things like that, but. I couldn't really see it or scoring, do you know what I mean? Purely not because see the system that we played, it'd be great if we had good players, do you know what I mean? But the players weren't good enough to to keep the ball for those long spells of time and But do you think it's the case if we get the like likes of, you know, Robbie Brady and stuff like that back or maybe James McCarthy or something that players who can play with the ball at their feet and they're very good at it, like I know Robbie Brady's very good yeah. even when he plays as a wing back or a full back. You know, he mm-hmm. not a lot gets to by him and he actually tends to bring the winger with him up the pitch rather than him tracking the winger. Yeah, yeah. That's what, yeah, of course, like but I think it goes from your from, from your spine though, you know what I mean? It's one thing having like uh for instance like having an out and out goal score, but it's a bit the product that's produced to that player behind him. Do you know what I mean? Like it, it, you can't just have someone who's an out and out goal scorer and have a team that's so inferior to other teams that they play, do you know what I mean, sitting deep and stuff like that. Like Robbie Keane at times would have to feed off scraps when we were playing a couple of years ago. Do you know what I mean? Um, which I'll probably show shows how good he was really. But um, it's hard, like because you, you look at people like Robbie Brady, and he is a very good player and stuff like that. But when you really look at it on paper, like that, that's like the best that we have players like that. Do you know what I mean? Obviously, James Coleman's a very good player, but um, if that's that's the best player that we have, like. You know, we have to look at kind of really, re- have a realistic view of what level that international teams at. Do you know what I mean? Um, I think it's going to be another, another five, ten years now before we have another whip round of good players coming through and the good young ones. You know, so it's probably time to have a big change and a change in a lot of things. I think through the country, but it's it's difficult when the money isn't there and the time isn't there. You know what I mean? Yeah, I agree with what you're saying there. Um. I mean, it's that's kind of something that we'll we'll have to kind of look at on a different day or mm. in a separate video. But um, you're going in into the third goal then, Ramsey's goal and Jonathan Walters gets caught in our half trying to chest the ball then, which is normally something that he's really good at. Um, you know, he get the ball, protect it, bring other players into play, and it kind of just showed how frustrated he was that he was coming that deep to try and get the ball. Yeah, and he looked, look, there was no kind of happy happy players, but I thought Walters especially was you could see how mad and how pissed off he was getting at the whole whole situation and, and as you said dropping deep then and then miscontrol miscontrols it or whatever and we're, we're well Ampadu pickpockets him and yeah. then gives a lovely ball into yeah. it to Ramsey and he makes uh, yeah, everyone knows 
how good he is in those positions. You know, he, he, he scores a lot of them goals for Arsenal. He does indeed, yeah. Um, but you know, like it, it, it there's de- there's definitely like O'Neill and Keane are getting smashed by pretty much everyone associated with Irish football at the moment. But you do have to, you know, I do have to give it to them, like. If you're relying on like we're so bare up front for attacking options, yes, I know there's other options we could probably possibly look at, Hoobin, etc. Or even I know he's he's called up he's a few more. He's put probably change it up a bit. But when you are relying to, on Walters, no disrespect to the guy, he's put in a big shift over the years. I think everyone can say that they all love John. Yeah, of course, they, of course. It's, it's, but it's, it's, now it's it's fading away, and he it perhaps he's going to be more useful. Maybe like the way we did would. With not like Quint, Quint, yeah. towards the end of his career where impact, so. it is that impact and like because at the moment we don't really have a pl- like some people argue we don't have a plan A but we don't appear to have a plan B where we did I remember like you, you go back to the, the, the best teams I remember they're probably that around that 0-2 mark under, with, with McCarthy and uh, the two Keynes and Duffer and etc but we did have we, we, we did try and kind of play a certain way to 60-70 minutes um, and then we would bring on Quinner or whoever and we would we would go a bit more direct at least, but it, you know it wasn't always the most pretty but at least we had an option and maybe maybe that's something we need to look at with perhaps with Walters and try and get a, a bit of fresh more blood up, up front because we are extremely extremely limited there and it's, it's sucking the whole team back when you have Walters in dropping back so deep uh, he's supposed to be your, you know, the guy leading. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, it really, really all together in his car crash material. Yeah, no, I, uh, I totally agree. We're going in half time, uh, three nil down, and let's be honest. I think every Irish fan, no matter how uh, optimistic they they are, you, you, we don't score goals, and that's. Yeah. I mean, albeit Sean Williams scored a nice goal when he came on, he took it very well. To be fair to him, I mean, if some of our uh, strikers could finish like that, would be. It'd be nice, but uh, like it was good to see him come on. But like again, he's thirty one. Yeah. Um, I just don't see where it's gonna go for him. Like it's all well and good him getting a cap, um, but in the longer run, I don't really see where where it's gonna go. Like in terms of, you know, international football, it's a pretty short career because you think like everything comes in kind of four year periods, mm-hmm. two year periods, the Euros, the World Cup, and stuff like that. So you only get a certain amount of time. He probably will not get a chance to feature in any tournament, but. As Kieran alluded to, our players are, are good enough at this moment in time, but we do have a lot of injuries still to come back. But uh, just in terms of, uh, obviously, they had their fourth goal then, and that effectively killed us off. Um, yeah, good play by Bale. Good play by Gale, but but again, this is what really really frustrated me. We had a lot of players back in the box, but they weren't really doing anything. Bale had time to step up, cross the ball. Guy took a touch, lovely finish. To be fair, but some, despite us having so many players in the box, none of us were, you know, making contact. None of us were getting a tackle in. Yeah. Um, it was just, it's just being there for the going, almost going through the rhythms. It it, it seemed like it, but you know, a, a tidy, a, again, another tidy finish, a, a lovely move, but again, far, far, far too much time on the ball. Mm. It was a great finish with that lad. That was yeah. on his bad foot as yeah, well. Like true, that. Yeah. Um, but I mean, from a Wales perspective, I mean, you're looking at it, and you can see these guys are like Ryan Giggs. Um, you're obviously a United fan. Um, I assume you're a big fan of Giggs. Uh, but just in terms of being really impressed by his his style of play, his management. Obviously, you're looking at us, and I don't believe that we have a very good style of play. I don't even. I don't actually know, don't know what our, what our style of play is at the moment. Mm-hmm. You're obviously Mr. Coach. Uh, <laughs> give us a <laughs> give us <laughs> give us a tactical <laughs> breakdown on this. Yeah, well, I think. Um, the the the, team, the way that you play is because of the players at expense, and I'm not saying Wales have an unbelievable team, but if you've one or two very very high level players that are at least up front or even behind, you're able to create a team behind that that's based off just producing to those two players or whatever it is. Um, so, some lots of teams have done it obviously over the years, like either club or internationally, where they've had one or two just very good players, and the team's been based off providing to them. Do you know what I mean? It's very different um, for Ireland when some of their stronger players are very deep and high in roles and probably their weakest players are at the very high of the, high of the field, do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Um, but in terms of Wales, like, you know, they've obviously got Bell, who's probably... Top, top, in the top, top ten, five, yeah, top, top five, ten, yeah. top five best players in the world. And then I'd they've say got the young kid, so. young kid from, uh, from Chelsea... Um, Pampadu, yeah. yeah. He was Sanford. very good on the day. He's very good, yeah. He um, was everywhere. Um, but when you have young players, when you only have, even if you have just one of those players coming through and he's in, in the centre of the field, one striker coming through, 
uh, one midfielder or one side midfielder and then one uh, centre back it mo- makes it very much easier for players to be built around those players you know what I mean because it almost raises other players game I think in my opinion like but in terms of the way that they play I think um, I think he doesn't I don't I don't think he overcomplicates things I think it's very very straightforward um, I think they press very they've started to press very high I've noticed that the Wales team whereas when they played against Ireland they didn't in the qualifiers they put they put uh, they press very deep to let Ireland go long because they were expecting a long ball to come and then they tried to then exploit space but there was no space because we were already sitting deep um so I think they they thought that I think the way that Martin O'Neill had lined out with the five at the back and that he he must have read that right they're gonna go wide now just like they did against USA so they're there for the taking so let's press very very high they're not good enough to receive the ball under pressure and know their next option. So if we cut off, if the first man presses and the second man is cutting off the second and third choice, we're going to win the ball very, very quickly because they're either going to panic and give the ball to us or they're going to panic and send it long like to very little that's up front for us. Do you know yeah, what I mean? well, you have a 34-year-old trying to latch on to Paul so he, he was just not um, at the races anymore. It's not his fault like that. Like He obviously he has his qualities. But obviously, um, we all remember Jonathan Walls used to play a lot on the right hand side. Yeah, and up run, and down, up and down, up and, and down. And he was very good at it. Yeah. Uh, but I just don't think he has the legs anymore to be to be chased in behind. Whereas if he's the focal point, why not put someone like um, I don't know, Callum Robinson or something beside him? Who, by the way, I thought was one of very few positives from the game. Yeah, yeah. To be fair, yeah. Along with the Williams goal, it's probably the one or two, maybe two positives you can get out the whole night. But what? Maybe I'm being too simple, I'm just, you know, or you know, cutting it down, or maybe being bog ignorant with this point of view. But like, y- you have to wind it back to the la- to the last qualifier over there. We bet this team, but there seemed to be a freshness. Well, we, posit- did, we we did have a lot of injuries though. I know we did, but ter- in terms of the freshness, in terms of the positivity, in terms of the feel good factor around the club, in terms of a team that knew what they're going to be doing, like we were so far. If you, the, we, the, those teams were both the set of games were so far off the radar from each other yes I know we have a lot of injuries but this seems to be like Wales have gone completely one direction we've completely gone off a cliff that has to be a bigger problem surely Um. yeah but it comes it comes down to that as well is that we were missing players I know we had we had probably had our you know preferred back five maybe not Stephen Ward as much anymore I think a lot of people are kind of gone away from Stephen Ward now and rather see Stevens or um, Cunningham coming I thought Stevens well when he came on as well um, be interesting to see if he kind of gets a couple of games to see how well he, he, he could be because it's a bit of a jump up from the championship to uh, international football and some players can do it as you've seen with the, the Welsh team um, and some players can't so I think I don't think Conor Hurran can, from what I've seen so far, he didn't look great. It was a difficult game for him to be fair, wasn't it? Like it was outnumbered at times in midfielder. Um, yeah, the 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 war thing is a is like seemed to be a nasty enough injury again for him. Um, but kind of added to a kind of a poorish performance as well. Maybe that's, maybe that's the time to to start looking at Stevens to probably get Cunningham in the squad a bit more. I thought it was a strange one him getting getting cut out at the end, but. I don't know. I'm usually I'm fairly optimistic with things, but I'm so so deflated. deflated it looks clear, I'm all right, yeah. Deflated of the whole situation. It feels like another end of Trapattoni, end of Stolton sort of vibe to it at the moment. And you know, um, there's a couple of couple of games coming here, and I think uh, soon enough, and it's going to be very interesting to see what the attendance is like because just from the general vibe initially after that, it's completely doom and gloom, and not a lot of interest in the, in the team, or definitely not much optimism. Yeah, well, I think we've, if we've kind of covered all angles in terms of, like, there's, there's not much we can kind of say more without kind of putting the boot in. I don't think, like, I'm sure anyone who's watching can let us know in the comments if we were a bit too critical or if we weren't. So um, we'll leave it at that. Anyway, yeah, let us know your thoughts in the comments. Um, we're on the road to 4K now, so uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Click the bell for alerts and don't forget to follow us on all our other social media.